while researching and recording for the new lands in Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 video, I made a discovery that really tickled my direct sequel senses. Namely, what we find at the northern and western edges of Hyrule. And by that I don't mean the sign that says I can't go any further, Tidefloor Ruins, the Lomei Labyrinths, or even the Bear at the very edge of the map, but the Leviathan Bones and Dragons. Two incredibly cool inclusions that ultimately, with the exception of Nadra, were severely underused and which I sincerely believe was deliberate, for numerous reasons, and today we'll be exploring this mystery in depth as I have this strong feeling that the mythical Leviathans and Dragons have a bigger role to fulfill in the sequel. And that is what we'll be exploring today, so be sure to smash that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and again for all notifications. Once again, thank you for making us 260,000 strong. We all know what the next target is, 300,000 subscribers. So let's get to before February 21st, the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, and for more journeys inside Breath of the Wild 2. Breath of the Wild's DLC Pack 1, The Master Trials, was all about the Master Sword, restoring it to its peak condition in any situation. DLC Pack 2, The Champion's Ballad, was all about testing Link's worth as the true hero of Hyrule. DLC 3, which was scrapped, was going to be about the spirit of the hero, the Divine Springs, but also the Guardians, the Dragons of Dinneral, Nadra and Farish. Nadra required liberation from Malice, an example of how power can corrupt wisdom, but the great potential of the Dragons of Virtues were left there, hidden in deep lore and completely optional quests and upgrades. Unless you were going for all Chica Shrines, that is. Delivering a beautiful experience whenever they graced the air with their wonderful theme, other than that, had little to offer. Until I realized that we had all been duped by the Zelda team once again. The Dragons of Hyrule may be first and foremost tied to their springs, but most of the time when we actually see them, they are flying around a set path in Hyrule and trying to prevent us from getting a piece of their scales or horns. And that path is very specific and definitely not in the heartland of Hyrule. Instead, it is found in Hyrule's borderlands, which we all know were underused in Breath of the Wild. Encouraging you to find the actual boundary of Hyrule and the biggest limitation of the game next to not being able to swim on the water wasn't exactly something that the Zelda team had first on their mind for the player. But at the same time, they wanted to reward us for our courage, determination and stayer ability. As in Hyrule's Edge we found Dinral, Nadra and Farish, turning the already gorgeous vista into something greater. Though the dragons were not the only creatures found in Hyrule's borderline, as in contrast to the Guardians of the Sky, the land was hiding the great skeletons, aka the Leviathan Bones. These extinct creatures from times unknown, which through identity has become a very popular subject among Zelda theorists, is mostly another connection to Skyward Sword, Link's Awakening and Phantom Hourglass. Another example of Breath of the Wild's connection to all timeline branches of the distant past, at least in terms of references. Namely that of Levius, the Windfish and the Ocean King Oceus, which seem to have ended their endeavours in the opposite realm of the home domain. And that is how we face the remnants of these important creatures to the deceased Lynx and the immortal spirit of the hero. Much like the dead titans of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, they are left out there in the middle of nowhere and in contrast to the three dragons of the Era of the Wild, have no other gameplay features to them other than hiding two Sheikah Shrines, an enemy camp and a picture side quest. Then again, both of these shrines were no doubt hard to get to as they brought us to the very edge of Hyrule. Wait a minute, all three Leviathans are found along the border of Hyrule? Same as where the dragons fly? Hmm, why exactly here? More importantly, could it be a hint of things to come in Breath of the Wild 2? Possibly yes, as reusing the same map warrants the need to reinvent the purpose of many features of Hyrule, and especially exposing underused elements from the original, like the Leviathans, Barbarians, the Zonai Mystery and the Dragons. Now, it will require some time travel to meet the Leviathans again, some rather extensive one at that, but who knows, everything is possible if the Gate of Time is still out there. While the importance of the Zonai that was highlighted in the reveal trail of Breath of the Wild's sequel can first and foremost be traced to Farish, the guardian deity and representative of the virtue of courage, the boar of power, owl of wisdom and dragon of courage. The dragons can be said to serve as the spiritual successors to the Leviathans, guarding the domains the Leviathans once called their home. But from who? Ganondorf? Or perhaps an external threat to Hyrule, much like what the Ocala Citadel was built to repel? Perhaps a divine line to defend from barbarians attacking from lands outside the boundaries of Hyrule. That would be a very interesting concept, 
as the dragons are not our enemies in Breath of the Wild. They can't be killed, and we even aid one of them, Nadra, at Mount Lanayru. In fact, in Breath of the Wild 2, they might even be our allies. It is just that their time did not arrive until the arena, I mean Hyrule Castle, was brought up from the ground and likely up to the sky. They waited for the hero to first get rid of the calamity before they could truly introduce themselves to both him and hopefully Zelda. I'm not sorry for that one. But as we mentioned in our last Breath of the Wild 2 video, Hyrule might expand to the north and possibly even the west. And if so, then the dragons might get some new flying patterns or perhaps even some new purpose. We all know Breath of the Wild was primarily centered on Princess Zelda, the deceased champions and the Sheik, but a sequel should lift up side characters and even sidekicks, something that Majora's Mask did brilliantly with the same assets. I could totally see Link and possibly Zelda in some quest lines with these ancient dragons, guiding them from the springs where Zelda struggled so hard a century ago, which would actually not be too different from what the dragons in Skyward Sword did. And from here, we see great potential. Though the dragons in Skyward Sword didn't exactly have the greatest role ever, in fact, two out of the three were pretty annoying, especially when it came to that damn song, so perhaps it's time to redeem them, and more importantly, do something more than just fly around aimlessly and serve as harvest points for some precious resources from time to time. In fact, the theme of Dinroll, Nadra and Farosh in Breath of the Wild is remarkably similar to Farron's, Eldin's and Lanayru's orchestral theme in Skyward Sword. All loyal servants of Goddess Hylian, which no doubt are also who the dragons of Breath of the Wild are serving. In other words, with the blood of the goddess, the Zelda team could use short hair Zelda to make the dragons speak and do something else than just fly alone around Hyrule. More specifically, invite the bloodline incarnation of the goddess and her hero for a ride over the ridge that we couldn't cross in Breath of the Wild and into new lands. Serving even as companions in later parts of the story and bringing us over to new territories which may be in a different loading area. But where? Obviously north and west, but perhaps also over the ocean and even into the skies where we have seen Dinral, Nadra and Farish disappearing. What if that boundary is the way up to the land floating up in the sky, the former Skyloft and City in the Sky? That would be some absolutely amazing character and world building. But most of all, a great surprise, just like the dragons were in Breath of the Wild. Now that we know about them, we need to see them evolve and do something more for us. Actual flying instead of liftoff and then gliding would be a welcome change of pace, much like the loft wings in Skyward Sword were. Oh, the potential. I'm just getting excited from the thought of it. But seriously, even without time travel to see the Leviathans alive, the dragons alone can offer so much and also make the integration of new areas so much easier for the Zelda team. How? By making them separate entities from the physics engine map we already have and that alone will save them plenty of time as adjusting this one to everything across the map was one of series producer Anuma's greatest headaches between 2011 and 2017. We need some wise and old dragons like Valu in The Wind Waker to spice up the sequel and we want all of Hyrule, which is on Hylia's side, to join the struggle and aid us along the way and the more Dinral, Nadra and Farish get involved and get screen time for gameplay and lore, the better. After all, we might see some competition in the dragon department from Horizon Forbidden West, and we want our dragons in Zelda to finally be more than just bosses, sitting deities and creatures that fly around aimlessly. We want to take part in the action to an even greater and definitely better degree than in Skyward Sword, and we want to ride some dragon as the closest we have been to that in Zelda is this, oh and this. But that was just a cutscene with Valu in the Wind Waker. Finally fly a dragon like Wind Waker's Valu outside of cutscenes and use these as another mode of transportation in the later part of the game in Hyrule and across the boundary into new lands outside of Hyrule and perhaps even to dungeon locations. But what do you think? Will we see a greater overhaul and involvement of the dragons in Breath of the Wild 2? Or will the Leviathan Bones get a bigger questline in the sequel or perhaps even come back to life through time travel? Sound off in the comment section down below. We hope you enjoyed this video, so be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already as we now push for 300,000 subscribers, and if you don't want to miss any other Inside Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 videos and Zelda videos for that matter, press that notification bell and again for all notifications. Our Patreon is still in the process of being rebooted, but a big shout out to everyone supporting us on Patreon. But until the next video, why not enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos?